Hi, Steve here at blessedhopeforever.com. Well, the eclipse came and went and nothing happened or did it? That's the question. This Wednesday, I'd like to talk a little bit about, well, several subjects. One being that we have every reason to hope that we are at the end of the age that it is being disputed among many theologians today. I believe we are, uh, and I also believe that we are secure in Christ. I'm gonna talk a little bit, I'd like to talk a little bit about what, what if I'm left behind, so uh, I'll get to that. I wanna remind everyone that we have been in the last days for 2,000 years. All right, that, that phrase, last days, denotes that this 2,000 year period since Christ. Dearly beloved, we're not at the beginning of that, or, nor are we at the middle of that, but we're at the end of that. Just the math, the numbers itself, seems to validate the fact that we are quickly approaching the, the last of the last days, the end of the age. There is hope even for those left behind. So I want to, since I believe we are that close, I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, as far as the eclipse goes, I said, I stated months ago that the eclipse of April 8th, 2024, would likely not be some 9-11 event, but instead it would be a significant marker on the overall prophetic timeline. Same with the eclipse of August 21st, 2017. I don't think any of us expected that eclipse back in 2017 to be an actual event. We actually thought the sign, the Revelation 12 sign would be an event. Turns out it was not. It was a marker, I believe. It was a marker on the prophetic timeline reassuring us that we were approaching the end of the age, that the final uh, 2000 year period of human history, according to the Bible, is ending and it amazes me the number of theologians, pastors, Bible teachers, uh, armchair warriors on YouTube, week, weekend you know, preachers on YouTube, the number of them that don't seem to believe that at all. And yet the world at large even appears to be catching on to the fact that we are, we are at the end of the age. That's kind of strange. I will go as far as saying that we, the church, the body of Christ, have gone beyond the point, beyond the point, where that we would be wrong for saying that our Lord's return is near even at the door. All right. In other words, no fault can be found with, with us watchmen. None whatsoever. I mean, even the world, much of the world believes what we believe. There will come a, a time in which they say, if we're not already there, where is the promise of His coming? So no charge can be made against us no charge of deceit. There, there are just too many factors, and, and it's a very intricate subject. I mean, there's a lot of intricacies surrounding this whole prophetic end times timeline. And so I want to point that, that fact out uh, before I forget. Now, sometimes I think that we all, to some extent, we talk about 
the pre-trib rapture. Understand, many ministries are not pre-trib. We are. We talk about it from a uh, standpoint of personal gratis gratification, expectation. Uh, I've known Christians that are actually giddy over the fact that the Lord's returning. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, wanna, I don't mean to criticize that at all. But it is, it is, truly, folks. It is a, it's such a somber turning point in human history that we need to, we should keep that in the forefront of our mind as we uh, go through these final phases of our dwelling here before we're taken home. I'm not much for mentioning names. I'm, I've never liked to do that, but there is a YouTube, uh, a prominent theologian on YouTube today who has openly stated since the passing of the eclipse that it wasn't a sign. It was not a sign that God is judging America and every, all these other watchmen who, who have they've been talking about that is just, they're just, well, they're just kind of looking for something that's not there. It's kind of a nothing burger. My response to that, I think, uh, is probably warranted here. One doctor that I know, a doctor has a holds a doctorate in theology. He just left eschatology. I'm leaving eschatology, he said. His reason, his reasoning, well, it was basically something to the effect that, well, because there's so much left to the domain of speculation, folks can just, well, they can just pick out just about anything and run with it. And they can defend some particular idea. So therefore, I have a dislike for eschatology. He, he went on to say, well, if, and, and if, you're, if you're loud enough about it, and you, you say it enough, if you do it often enough, talk about these things often enough, well, then people are going to think well, they're going to think that you're really on to something. It's a, you know, it's a subject that is so vast with so many intricacies. Well, he, he, he goes on to say, I mean, who is going to spend the time? Who wants to spend the time? Or who is going to spend the time to tell you that you're wrong? And I, and I, I listen to this. And when I hear him make that statement, right away I'm thinking, well... Now, wait a minute. For one, he just spent the time telling me I'm wrong. Now, of course, he wasn't speaking to me personally. He was speaking to us watchmen in general. But, you know, he just spent the time telling me I'm wrong. Now, this is a theologian. He's prominent, well-known, well well-respected, holds a doctorate degree in theology. Never mind the fact that the world at large believes we're nearing the end of the age. Now, I want to be polite here, but besides that statement sounding stupid, Uh, that seems to me, folks, to at least be bordering on saying where is the promise of His coming. Be 
Where's the promise of His coming? You don't think that in the tribulation period they're going to say that. Where's the promise of His coming? No, they're going to know He's coming at that point. This is talking about us leaving here. How any learned scholar can say that he dislikes eschatology when two-thirds of the Bible is eschatology is beyond me. I, I got to scratch my head at that one. Now, personally, I was recently told a week or maybe 10 days ago, well, Pastor Steve, maybe, and I've heard this I don't know how many times before, maybe the Lord wants us to watch for Him every day and just, just stop trying to figure out the next event or uh, feast or, or holiday, next feast day, holiday. Uh, you know, it just seems futile. So I want to I wanna sort of give you my response to that as well. Now, I have no doubt that these people mean well. And folks, I don't mean to be critical. But I believe down deep in my heart that God delights in our exploring possible timelines. That He delights in us standing here, sitting here with great anticipation, eagerly awaiting His, anxiously awaiting His return. But moreover, as a result of our consistency, I'm talking about other watchmen as well, not just me. As a result of our consistency in exploring possibilities for seven years, or some of us have been doing it longer. But in the case of Blessed Hope Forever, I guess I should just speak for this ministry. In the past seven years, countless souls have been, have been and are being awakened to His near return. But more than that, countless souls, I've got it documented, have been saved as a result of these, this last day's ministry. That, folks, is not futile. Several of the, the headlines for April 8th, of course, I, you know, I'm, when April 8th rolled around, I was, I was quick to, to, to be watching the news. The United Nations, Palestinian representation, uh, the big one of the big news was Palestine wanted to be represented in the UN. They hadn't been. They're, they've been kind of like the Vatican. They they weren't represented. Now they're pushing to be. All this on April 8th. The Biden administration's position on Israel, which seems to be drifting further and further away from Israel, uh, trying to think that you know our commander in chief here, trying to think that he can tell Netanyahu how to run a war when he 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 really couldn't didn't know how to get out of Afghanistan. There's much I published outside of this, of this video. Uh, 2024 is projected to be a one intense hurricane season. The projections are grim. The numbers are extreme for that. Uh, just Google search that. I recommend a Google search on that. I've mentioned the, the Hollywood movies, the entertainment industry. They've jumped onto this thing big time. It's almost like they're listening to us, you know, or some of us. 
You need to go and watch the trailer for The Ark in the Darkness. Uh, the release date, I believe, on that was March 20. Just, oh, several weeks before the eclipse. And then I think they showed it again. Uh, they had a final showing that it was a lot closer to the eclipse. Now, many of you understand, you, you've heard, you know what a, a supernova is. I've, I've done, I've made several videos where I mentioned uh, supernovas. A lot of strange astronomical things have happened in the past seven years, folks. I, you could do an entire video on it. Uh, supernova. Well, there's a kilonova. I didn't even know that. I, it's bigger than a supernova. A kilonova. You might want to Google that. Kilonova. Now, when was this kilonova discovered? It was discovered the 17th of August, 2017. Okay? Four days before the first eclipse, North American Great Eclipse. August 2017, Hubble detected gravitational waves from the collision between two neutron stars. If that happens within, if, if we're within 33 light years of that, it's extinction on Earth. That is a sign in the heavens. But folks, we have to pay attention. Why? Because these things don't happen by accident. These are not coincidences. These, these are not random occurrences. These are not, well, this stuff happens all the time, Steve. Okay, I, well, but that may be true, but we're here at this time. It's happening now. Israel, the IDF, the six-month war, six months to the day almost. It enters a new phase. It's not entering a new phase. It has entered a new phase. That's past tense, okay? Rafa, Hezbollah. That is not going away. I don't care what the news commentators say. This conflict is unending until the Lord returns. ISIS is on the rise again. He, ISIS is, is threatening the actual security of Russia. Many, many, many Muslims live in Russia. They're having to deal with ISIS at, as we speak in an unprecedented way. You may want to look into that. But the primary reason I'm making this, this video is to talk about what if you're left behind? What if I'm left behind at the rapture? I'm, I'm sure that at least there may be some out there that are concerned about that, that have asked that, themselves that question. But before I get into that, I want to mention one other thing, and that is Pentecost coming up. Now, on the Gregorian calendar, it's different. On, on the Torah calendar, it's May 14th, the very date Israel was reborn as a nation. 76th year of Israel. 76. So May 14, 2025 would be 77 years. But I don't want to jump ahead that far yet. But uh, uh, 2017, Revelation 12 sign, Feast of Trumpets. You had the first eclipse in 2017 followed by a feast day. Feast of Trumpets. This year, 2024, we have the second eclipse, 2024, and it's followed by another feast day, Pentecost. I think that's relevant. I think that may be worth exploring, at least as an idea. It does sort of keep me on the edge of my seat thinking about Pentecost. We're almost there. The 2017 eclipse was followed by a feast day trumpets. The 2024 eclipse, which occurred just days ago, April 8th, is followed by a feast day. 
could the church be raptured on the day that it began? That's, that's the thought. That's the question. I've always considered that an intriguing idea, you know, that the church would in. And it's all about looking for patterns. Now, folks, maybe there's no patterns at all anywhere. Maybe all of this is just mixed up, sort of just like, you know, you just God just stirred it all up, and there's no real pattern anywhere. I'm not sure I would believe that. I can believe that. I think there are patterns because there's always been patterns in the past when it comes to these things. Now, from the eclipse to Pentecost, I think it's like 37 days. We're even closer than that now at the making of this video. But, but May of 2025 will mark 77 years of Israel. Folks, we are getting near the end. All right? We are. I, there's just, we've, we've come too far. Uh, well, to quit, for one, but uh, we've come too far into this to not believe I, I have gotten no indication. I've received no indication. I've seen nothing, nothing at all that would indicate that, well, we've just been wasting our time for seven years. I, I, sorry, I just don't see that. So now, what if you are left behind? If you're watching this video and the rapture occurs and you're still here? Sounds pretty grim, doesn't it? The church age will end. There'll be an end to the age. Okay, it's, it's the end. It marks the end of one age and the beginning of another. I've, I've always believed the tribulation is a sort of a parenthesis where that the kingdom age, now we have another age that begins at the return of Christ, where that we return with Him at the second coming. We're caught up to the throne. We're there during the tribulation period. We return with Christ, the church, at the second coming. But you're left behind and you find yourself in the tribulation period. Is all hope lost? Well, of course not. Of course not. The first thing that I want to mention here, which is not a popular idea, and it's not some idea that Blessed Hope Forever concocted, it is a factual, it is a truth, truthful fact based on Scripture. Every single individual who will ever step foot into glory, every single person saved throughout all time, all of human history, every single person that goes to heaven, every single one, I'm talking about from the first to the last, They were made able to do that because of one thing only. Not because of anything they did, but because Jesus Christ died in their place. When Jesus Christ died on the cross and redeemed mankind, He didn't redeem everyone. Now that's just an obvious fact. It's a fact that, that people don't tend to want to think about, but He just, there are sh sheep, there are goats. There's wheat and there's tear. If you're left behind at the rapture, does that mean that you are tear? Does that mean that you're a goat? No, it does not mean you're a goat. It doesn't guarantee that you're a sheep, but it does not mean that you're a goat. You, you can be one or the other. One or one of the one of the two. By one sacrifice, He redeemed all mankind. One sacrifice. He, Christ did not redeem... Listen, dearly beloved, Christ did not redeem you because of some decision you made. You know, you accepted Christ on January 1st of 1977 and therefore Christ redeemed you. No, He redeemed you when He died. You were elect, chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Now, if you're left behind, it, what it means is you were not a member 
of Christ's body, the church. God redeemed you, but if He in fact did, He redeemed you, but He, God, determined, decreed, deigned, decided that you would come to know Him as, as your Lord and Savior at a different time. There are tribulation saints. Why? That's why there's tribulation saints. Tribulation saints don't become tribulation saints during the tribulation. Tribulation saints can be alive on earth today because Christ died in their place. That's the point I want to make. There's a difference between the church and Israel. There's a difference between the church age saints and tribulation period saints. Okay? There are those that God designed, destined would be the correct word, to go through the tribulation period. Now, why you'd have you got to take that up with him? I I don't know. I don't know. But there must be there must be tribulation. If, if we are in fact, and I believe we are, near the end of the age where Jesus is standing at the door and He's coming any day now, any month now, any year now. I, I believe, I still believe that the wheels of prophecy turn slowly. But if that's true, I'm going to say since that's true, there, are, there must be tribulation saints alive today. They are not members of Christ's body. They, they are not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. One of the, one of the remarkable things about the church age saint is that we are indwelt with the very fullness of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Old Testament saints were not indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Tribulation saints will not be indwelt by the fullness of God the Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have all three members of the Godhead living inside us. During Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit would come upon God's people temporarily for service and then leave. Not true in our case. The church is unique. I don't think there's been enough videos done about the uniqueness of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is just that, the body of Christ. Tribulation saints will not be able to say, well, I'm a member of the body of Christ. Tribulation saints will not be able to, 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 to look in, in the New Testament, open their Bibles to the New Testament and, 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 and apply church age truth to their lives now don't make don't be confused here i don't mean to say that many of the verses in scripture that we read that we cherish that we talk about such as god works all things together for the good to those who love god and are called according to his purpose there are many truths in the new testament that are true of tribulation saints as well as old testament saints but they are not members of the body of Christ. But if you're left behind, hope is, not, is far from lost. Far from lost. So I, wanna, I, wanna, I just want to mention that. Uh, just give you that to think about. Follow us, if you'd like to, in Philemon on Sundays. Uh, we're working on getting our new studio set up. Uh, and uh, so the videos in the future may look a little different. I want to thank all of you for following us uh, for these past seven years. We love you. We truly do. I pray for you all constantly. I ask you for your prayers, continued prayers for the direction of this ministry. Until next time, Thank you for watching. This is Steve. Rest in Him.